people good day and welcome back so today we're gonna finally jump back into um, using the yo full stack generator ng full stack generator for yeoman and the sub, sub generator we'll be using today is um, the one for a resource and we're gonna see how to create a resource all right so come on let's jump in and let's do this we're gonna look at how you add a resource and we're going to see exactly what a resource is. Um, in our preface, when we're doing things before we started using a generator, and we're just doing by hand, we didn't have a model. So then we saw that oh, it's nice to create something like a model, encapsulate the properties of that model or entity, and then also have methods that are appropriate to act on that model, whether it's validating it, or if you want, you can imagine a model that you might want to do more complex things, like if you had a a person model, you may be able to put their date of birth in, but then used always ask for their age and it automatically calculates based on their birthday and the current date and date or current year or at a, um, every month, um, they could, it would return how old the person is. So uh, a model allows you to encapsulate operations and properties specific for the entity or things that you're trying to model in your application. And a resource, so, Angular provides this dollar sign resource service, and it's built on top of the dollar sign HTTP service we have, we have used previously. Dollar sign HTTP service, if you remember, it looks something like this. We can specify the method and the URL, and then you know it was a promise, which we know all about now, and it returned a promise, and then we call like the den function, um, which we can pass to it um, the success and the error callback functions. And that's all we've been using, but that's the more low level way. So after Angular came out with um, dollar sign HTTP, they later on shipped um, dollar sign resources, which uses dollar sign HTTP, but it's a lot easier to use. And to get an idea of how easy it is to use, you can see that you just call it dollar sign resource service, like a function, pass it in the URL, and then the other things are optional. Um, the parameters, defaults, is tell you how you bind to the URL if you have um, uh, you know, um, parameter, um, variable parameters in the URL. We'll see an example of that. So here's an example of where you can have something like dot sign resource ID colon resource ID colon format. And, you know, you could specify that um, at runtime. So the dynamic URL, which we covered before. And so, and then actions. And actions would be, you know, the methods you can call not the HTTP method, but we can see methods you can call on the resource object that is returned when you call this. You can have different actions you can call, and those actions you now can specify the HTTP method they're going to use, and of course the URL. But you will see that um, the dollar sign resource is pretty smart that you don't even have to specify an individual URL for each one of these methods. We'll see. Let's get into it because I can keep talking about this and this video is just going to be very, very long. As it is, it's going to be pretty long. So let's take a look. All right. So here I am. I have MongoDB running and it's running using this data directory here. So I'm in chapter nine in our data directory. And then I went into our application directory, the demo application, because we're back to working on the application itself. Because today we can actually use the Yeoman generator and the sub generator for resources on the ng full stack generator and I have my editor open so let's add a resource so here is uh, my model and then we injected it into our control and we we saw how you can use that and we had a route for comments and we were displaying it so that's all good and dandy but let's run our application if you remember that is ng npm run dev and that should get our application running and it's going to open up here in a tab in a minute and there it is and if we go to Start forward slash comment. Um, there are the comments that we created in our controller showing up on user interface. And that's ni nice and fine. Um, the thing we want to do though is um, let's do this. I'm going to do this again. NPM uh, minus minus. Um, okay, not NPM. Yo minus minus help. And that's what I ran is before I start the video. And you'll see the resource sub generator here for ng full stack. And so I want to say yo ng full stack colon 
resource and then the name of the resource I want is comment resource let's call it comment resource and then I want to put it in the feature um, directory of to do feature to do directory and so we'll see that what's going to do is create a resource directory which is a different path than the code that was generated for the to do there's a to do resource and they put it in the service directory but it's still even if you put it in the service directory note that it was just a factory and we know all the difference between services and know about the differences between service and factory now so we know that all this is doing is returning a value that's that is going to be returned by this function call here to the service. That's saying resource service returns an object and that is being returned and going to be reused over and over. But let's just see what's got generated for us. First thing I'm going to do is change the name here. I'm call this comment that resource just to keep it a little bit more consistent with everything else. Of course, you know that once we add a new JavaScript file, we need to also um, you know, add things here. So we're going to do resource forward slash comment that resource. Okay. That JavaScript. So that takes care of our JavaScript, our index.html file. So it pulls in this new resource. Now, this looks very different than the one that was generated for in the example code. The example code did, did not specify anything here um, like you saw they did in the previous one, and it certainly didn't configure the method object um, but let's look at ours and so what we can see is this is a factory and this is the name of it and it's going to you i have this i define this variable called resource um, api let's just call it resources um commentary and then forward slash colon id which says that oh this is dynamic url in which it's not fixed and another parameter could be passed here to fix this. Now the value that's gonna be passed to this parameter can be come from an object um, where we say, the way we wanna bind parameters to this URL is this ID um, part of the parameter of the URL, the parameter ID for this URL should be bounded to an ID field in our in an object that's passed to this resource. That is, when you use this resource, if you pass it an object, um, then um, Angular should look in that object, and if there's an ID field, bind it there. And if it's not, well, then don't use this part. And that come in handy because when we do things like get, in which we want to read an array of results or multiple objects, we just say get, and we won't have to specify and give it an object and so this would be missing, so essentially it's going to do a get on this URL, this part of the, the, the URL. And so that allows us to fetch all the objects. On the other hand, when we say get by ID and we call this function, by the way, these are the, the action name that you saw in the documentation here. Um, this actions parameter, these are the action name. By default, Angular uses the name get, save, query, remove, and delete. But you can override them with your own name. So here, the action name for saving, updating something is update. For creating something new is insert. Um, if you want to get a list of stuff, it's get. If you want to get a specific item, well, then it's get by ID, where you specify the ID as an object. And it's saying that the return value is not going to be an array. We're going to use the HTTP get method. And if that object that we pass in to get by ID contains an ID attribute, well then, or property, that's gonna be bounded here. Same thing with delete. When we do a delete, we're gonna pass an object containing an ID and that's gonna get bounded there. So it knows exactly it's gonna send the delete to API slash comment slash whatever is in our object. We're gonna see that in the documentation, but I kinda of just wanna go through these three variables that are being con initialized here and then show you how the resource um, service is being called with those values. And these, again, are optional. And you can see it in the um, to do a resource here um, that they did not use those parameters. They did not configure those parameters. All right, so we have our thing. Now, you might be a little bit confused about the rest of the code. So this part is straightforward. This is nothing more than var app equals to angular that module and give the demo app. And then we're using 
app here, except they call it ng. All right. So when we know when you could use Angular module like this without a dependency, it means look it up. So why is this encapsulated into this function? Well, way back when we did JavaScript, we talked about the immediately executing function. And it's basically the idea that JavaScript allows you to do, um, put a simple expression in um, a parentheses. And so we can do something like that and, it's, and it would get executed, right? Um, but if this, this is a function to the call to the log function, but I also call any function, so I could call a function foo, and let's say my foo function was defined up here to be var foo is equals to some anonymous function that takes some parameter x, and then you know call console.log with x, that would also work, all right? Um, well, if I'm gonna create an anonymous function here, why not just take foo here, just evaluates to this value of this anonymous function, so why not save myself the trouble and just stick the anonymous function right here? And so now I get rid of this. And so what I get is I don't have my global space polluted with a value or a variable called foo. Instead, this, thing's get, this gets created and evaluated inside this parentheses and nothing is actually introduced into the global namespace. So it's one of the advantages of doing ifies. And you get all the benefits of if you didn't use it, if he, and uh, the additional benefit of not having to introduce object into your global namespace. So what you're doing is this is the value of the anonymous function, and you're immediately calling it with the value 45, and that's what you see here. They're calling it with a value window.angular because when you add Angular to your application in this index.html, Angular appends a property when it's loaded onto the window object, and call Angular that allow you to, to be a reference to Angular. Now the reason why it works with, even when we don't specify window that Angular is because if you try to use a variable or object in JavaScript and it's not defined anywhere, it sort of goes through a series of steps of trying to figure out where it is. And one of them is um, anything that's on the window um, gets called if it just doesn't exist anywhere else. So in other words, if you use just Angular just like that, even though it's not defined anywhere in scope, it would eventually just find it on the window object. So, but here they're being very explicit, so, so that's nice. So anyway, so that's passed in as a parameter here in this anonymous function, and that's why we don't have to use Angular, we, we just use the parameter that's passed in here, and here they use window that Angular. Okay, so none of this should be really confusing. This immediately executing iffy, the fact that this is a factory and a value is going to be returned, which is going to get used over and over every time this resource, which I'm going to copy now, is injected. And this is just the URL to our, uh, the RESTful endpoint to our backend, which is a dynamic URL, and we're saying how to bind to that value. Maybe we might decide to do more things here. We might have, you know, colon, um, date, or something like that, and then we can say that, oh, you know, the date parameter is bounded to you know, some other parameter in some object that we, where we pass in this, uh, some other object, okay? So, uh, we don't need to do that right now, so, um, or ever, I don't think we, I'm just showing an example of creating dynamic URL. All right, so, so that's fine. Um, uh, let's see here, uh, format, okay. All right, so now that we have a resource, this is pretty straightforward, let's use it on our controller. So let's go back to our controller, and we're gonna inject our resource I paste earlier. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna inject here into our controller. I wanna see how to use our resource. Now remember, the resource is an abstraction over using the sign HTTP service so we can talk to our backend. And the resource is gonna allow us to save, retrieve, and all these other things, as we saw here. It's going to allow us to do all these operations with our backend. So let's try it. And so the very first function I actually want to create here is let's say self that create. Let's call it create is equals to function that takes a comment object and then var c is equals to a new comment. Remember, we have this constructor function to construct and comment based on if you give it um, some object, 
and so our constructor function is here you know comment and then it's a factory and then if you give it some variables it initializes these things well using ng extend but it initializes these properties and so we have that injected and so this should give us a new comment of course now we can say you know if c that is valid or something like that um, only then um, do you like try to send something to the back end but we're going to ignore any sort of testing so we're not going to have a valid object as you will see in a minute and so if that is the case once we call the create function what do we want to do well we have the comment resource right which allows us to talk to our back end why don't we use that to talk to our back end so which function do we call well according to our resource if you want to post create something you call the insert method so insert and then we, we pass c and then this thing this insert method returns a promise so it returns an object which we're gonna say oh we want a promise from it and from that promise we want the then function our then function that uh, then function to be called on success and then catch if there's an error okay so that's it now what is the what should happen if there's success well this is our success function which means that though we're most likely going to get back you now a comment from the back end which would be you know um would have the new updated um comment id from mongodb or whatever we store in our database so we might want to you know um put that on our list of comments right comments that push you know this new um result result all right respond or result whatever so we want to push that onto the list append it onto the list but also if there's an error we want to do function you know error and we might want to do self that mesg or error message for example well, let's just message mesg is equals to whatever error message we get back all right so that doesn't look too bad but let's, let's just test, test it out well to test it we're going to need our html or comment html form this guy to be able to accept the properties for a new um, comment so let's do a div uh, maybe yeah let's do a div and then a function a form uh, let's see if this is going to do any yep um, thing for us and what we want to do is um, something like a label for um, subject for example and let's call this subject and we're going to do uh, label and then we do input type equals text text and then ng model is equals to ctrl represents our controller and then we should probably define a comment in there and then comment that subject right and so let's go back to our thing and let's do self that comment equals to new comment so it's just an empty comment okay and let's um, so there's just an empty comment doesn't have anything and so let's go back here and so that's one thing that's uh, the comment um, the other thing we can do is you now let's say we put on a button ng click equals to ctrl that create remember that function we created and it accept what a, co a comment object right so let's just do well um let's just pass it in and ctrl that comment um now we pass in a comment object the same object we create but it's okay um so that comment and so we pass that in and we're gonna say call this create and i think now is time to close our diff actually started the diff with the wrong thing that we were creating a diff all right uh, let's take this out then we don't need to create yet another diff okay so 
that looks like this. So we have this form and with a comment create thing. Let's look at um, what's actually sent to the back end. So we go here and we'll go to network. And if we should type um, my my new comment and we try to create it. Now we don't have all the fields. That's why I said we're not gonna check everything. Of course we know that this is wrong. Um, but if you look, you'll see here the URL tries to post it to API um, comments and it tries to do a post. That's because we call that that insert function from our comment here, all right? And if we actually print out the message property um, here, we'll see what the error message is. So for example, if we want our errors to be displayed at the top, we can say, you know, message colon error as CTRL that message MESG, pipe it to JSON so it's nicely formatted. And so now, once that's saved, and we come back here, we try to do it. Another new comment, and I'll clear the screen. I'll click there, and you could see it tries to cam post to this URL 401, doesn't exist, you know, error. And then, as you can see, for our object, it says ID is null, subject is another new comment. Author is, of course, null task ID because we didn't put any of that, and that's the URL I tried to post to, and all this other stuff. So we could see our resources working really nicely. Now, what if I wanted to get a specific resource? One of the things I might want to add to my form is, you know, something to get. Yeah, let me undo this. Um, bam. Oh, come on. And so I might want to specify the ID of um, ID, comment ID, and name. I should really put a name here equals the comment ID and then here I should do name equals the subject okay not a big big deal but we should do it all right and then this is let's call it text also and then this is the ID property of that okay and so now um, let's do this let's separate this and put a horizontal rule and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to say this is a get function, right? And so our get should fetch what? It should fetch comment.id, right? That's all it needs to fetch. And uh, we call it fetch. Of course, we haven't written this function yet. So let's go back to our controller and I'm going to write this function by duplicating this function. So we're going to call this fetch. And it takes a comment ID. Comment ID. And instead of creating a new comment, all we care about is an object that has an ID property, and then we can give it this value, comment ID. All right? Because once we whatever ID is passed in that you want to look for, that's all the object we our object needs. And then we're not going to use the insert function, but rather to look up something, we want to use get by ID, that's the one we want, because we're not trying to fetch all the uh, comments right now. And the same thing, so get by ID, pass it this object, which has ID, and because if you remember, our resource says, hey, if you try to perform one of these operations where you have an ID in the object you give me, I'll bind it to the URL. So we should see whatever ID we pass in, a dynamic URL is get, get, a dynamic URL get created, and here, if we do fetch something, yeah, we might want to not push it on the list, but maybe um, show it on uh, somewhere else. I don't know. Um, we could do console.log. We might want to do something else. If this was an edit form, then yeah. Um, so until that log or um, DR, you know, and then we want to show um, this thing, uh, whatever the result is. And then if it's an error, of course, we want to assign it to our error thing. And so now, if we come over here um, and we say that our, what we want to look up is fetch the object 5.fb, whatever. 
something like that. That's the ID. Let's imagine Jason, um, MongoDB give that ID. And we say get. Now notice how it says do a get to this URL. Notice how my value here was put on the end of the URL in place of that colon ID. Why? Because I passed an object with colon ID having that value, which I passed in from my template over here when I made this call. So that call a fetch function with this ID. In my controller, I took that value, create an object, pass that to the get by ID object. Now, the get without passing anything is going to work pretty much the same. If I call get instead or whatever that was called, let's see, what was it called? Yep, if I call get and I don't need, I wouldn't need to pass anything. And that's actually going to do a get call, HTTP get method on the same URL, but it wouldn't have anything to bind to that URL, so I wouldn't have a dynamic URL. And I could do delete can be the same exact same thing. I mean, uh, to do a delete is pretty much taking this, duplicating it, call it remove or something like that. And then our remove function takes an ID and then we call the function responsible for delete, which is delete. So we call delete, pass it that, and again, success error. And now I just have to update my template to say, hey, I now have a delete function and which passes the same ID. Come on. And so now after that saves an update, so watch it save, then watch this update. Now I can put an ID here and then I can say, let's clear this out. I can say delete and you're gonna see it do a delete to that URL. Uh, Where's my network? Um, here, it did a delete to that URL. Here's the URL and ah, I did not change um, something. So controller, um, ah, oh yeah. Here, I did not change my call here, which was supposed to be removed. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so after this update, uh, let's see, all right clear that out, da, 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 delete, and we could see it failed, and it's trying to get to that URL, and it tried to do a method to delete, the request method, the HTTP method was delayed. So you can see how using this resource, we can perform all those sort of operations that we were doing before, and the resource abstracts it away for us. In the next video, we're gonna create a data access objects, object, which encapsulate talking using our resource without making the controller have to deal with all these issues and kind of hides it away nicely for us. But we'll see that in the next thing. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, post a comment, let me know. We'll go it over again. Thanks to all the people who've been commenting and thank you all for subscribing. And if you have, you're not subscribed, but you're watching my video, thank you still, even though you haven't subscribed, but please do subscribe. And um, of course, I really would like you to spread the word and help me grow the channel. I'm really trying to um, spend time, more time creating videos, but I can't do that without a lot of subscribers to justify it. All right. Um, thanks. See you in the next video. Spread the word. Subscribe. Take care. Bye. Practice also. Practice. Practice. All right. Take care.